Oh my god. What is up, guys? A Chew here. Bringing you... I'm gonna call this a mid-season finale. Okay, I'm pulling a walking dead here. It is a mid-season finale for SAO, Alicization. And goodness gracious, guys. If you're watching this video, watch it in its entirety because there is something very special that if you guys haven't been already aware of, has been announced. And I want you guys to watch till the very end and leave a like, comment down below, and let me know your thoughts on this episode or at, on this half of the season thus far. But my god, like this is probably the best episode of SAO that we have gotten since first half of the season first half of the first season that's saying something guys that was nearly five years ago i think it is crazy that this episode came and went as quickly as it, it anyway i can't even speak because honestly it's just a very very action-packed episode we have kirito going out against quinella and Quinella, goodness gracious, like the way she fights against him, Kirito pulling out the best outfit that he has, of course that being the Black Swordsman outfit, bringing that look back again since, you know, two episodes ago he had it, and now he's doing it all over again. And I want to say, those that are were waiting for Kirito to showcase his skills, uh, he, he does once he has... His full equipment and I'll say that what I mean by that in a second but Quinella the one-armed Quinella just goes at it against Kirito he is struggling because Quinella knows her stuff and she basically says anything that is in this world I know and this is no nothing to me Kirito thinks that at first he thought maybe if I use an attack that I didn't show to Yu-Gi-Oh maybe I can have the upper hand and nope she quickly dismisses that it doesn't matter what he pulls out quinella has the has him on the run gets him good a couple of times and after having a moment with yugio and i think this is probably for all those yugio fans i am very very sorry uh, because your boy did not deserve that fate he really didn't and after kind of talking to him he kind of gives him like I don't want to say his energy, but it gave him a really cool sword moment. Like, I thought that was really cool. This moment between these two was very nice. And he gives him a crimson blade. That's what I'm going to call it. The crimson blade. I don't know what it's called in the novels or any of that. So don't, you know, bash me for it. But he gives him a crimson blade. And I think it's like his blood and the crystal mixed in with his already broken sword. And it kind of reminds me of, like, from Dragon Ball, when Trunks did that against Zamasu. If you guys remember that or were fans of Dragon Ball, you guys will remember that callback here. And and I'll make another callback a little later from a different series that obviously gave me that kind of weird vibe. But we do see how, with this new sword, with this, I guess, upgraded sword, Kirito is once again the dual-bladed swordsman. And boy, had I missed seeing that. I know someone in the comment section were like, you know, Kirito's gonna have his sword blades well here's his moment he's got both swords and boy does he give quinella a good run and i thought yugio was done at this point i thought he died he closed his eyes and like kirito was ready to go at him i really felt bad for alice because throughout the whole episode she was ko'd and it, it's it's kind of messed up because kirito really went all out here but we do also see him having the glowing eyes the same eyes that he went against i, I believe it was I God, I can't remember that professor's name right now, but you know who I'm talking about. He has those eyes again against Quinella, and he just goes at it. Like, he just goes complete rampage and cuts off Quinella's arm, and Quinella cuts his arm off, and things go ballistic. Like, things get crazy between the two. Quinella is in full rage. She is just definitely not having him. She uses her hairs like her hair to kind of like i guess manipulate act as, ar as arms and starts choking the heck out of uh, kirito kirito gets out of it and sends the decisive blow to her chest and like that to me was a callback right there with obito you guys remember from naruto where kakashi put that hole in his chest 
and he was like walking it's like look i have no heart well the same thing with quinella guys quinella just takes that blast to the chest and she's like i have no other choice at this point i'm going to go and use my escape and honestly i wasn't expecting her to try to escape but that itself doesn't actually work out for her in her attempt to leave uh she does say to kirito it's like i'll see you again boy but in your world so what in the world did that mean like i i don't know for sure if quinella is dead if she is then this was the perfect death i mean i don't want to get to that that was the perfect moment uh but i i definitely think that we haven't seen the last of her i think we will see her maybe on the other side and what i mean by that not necessarily in the real world but i think we'll see her in the dark territory and that is still a you know looming threat but it is crazy how like as she's escaping she's saying some words and i hate when they do that because they're gonna make a call back to them we don't know who that is like what what i mean who like what was she trying to say and chuckles chuckles was trying to go with her then like in the process like I, I was kind of weirded out i was a little scared i was very skeptical i was like what is chuckles trying to do here he tries to run with her and it looks like an explosion it, it almost seemed as though he took her out uh, but again we i don't really know she does go like i don't know if she reverted back to her her normal self but she looks at the world and she's kind of like in this ghost state and she does like this world of mine i'm like what like what does that even mean so i don't know what happened there but then we get to see kirito having once again a moment with uh yujio this time it being his final moment and yujio shares with him the memories that he had with alice he now remembers everything kirito has remembered everything which i think he has since the beginning but i feel like fragments of his memory were kind of changed or kind of like locked away or whatever and then with him remembering that one moment that kind of drove yujio kind of to betray and i'm saying that quotation marks kirito and alice i feel like we get to see that moment where it's truly explained that they were both actually making a gift for yujio for his birthday and now he accepts the fact that alice is also now a different person the alice that he saved was the memories and the one that kirito saved was the alice the integrity knight so it's two different alices and he dies unfortunately along with alice's memory uh and it's kind of like for me it was naruto again and i i know i'm making a lot of callbacks to other series but guys that's kind of the best way for me to kind of explain things uh to others where we see alice and yujio kind of departing to i guess to the afterlife and him reverting back to to him being a kid so that he can ma you know match alice's age and the memories which honestly that to me was like straight out of obito you know with when when he did that with rin and i was like uh but it, it wasn't any less sadder you know it was still very sad to see yujio go and the memories that you know, he so hard tried to save but i think if alice had been given those memories back i don't think alice would have been the same person she would have been very confused and i don't think that may have worked and that's just my opinion well let me know what you guys think but then things may look like they've been solved but it looks like another unexpected turn is happening and in the real world this time we have kirito trying to make contact with kikawa and he does after like a few attempts but he hears gunshots something is happening in wrath right now where people have infiltrated and are going out trying to steal the technology trying to go after all these things i, I don't even know if they're kirito's a target or if they're looking for other specific things but they're going and trying i don't know how they even got there i wonder if it's that same like army battleship that we saw many episodes ago were they the same people and who is this organization that wants all the stuff that wrath has been working on it looks like uh, it's uh, something even bigger than we've even expected going on that maybe uh kikawa must have crossed the wrong path with someone and now it's betrayal i, I don't know whether someone has a personal vendetta against uh 
Kirito, I don't know. But when we have Kirito hearing that Asuna is actually there, he freaks out. And then we have Kikua saying, you need to find a girl named Alice. And so, like, he says, I have Alice with me. So, what in the world? Like, the Alice is a target and he's worried about Asuna. And then the episode ends with Asuna being teased in her SAO outfit, her traditional outfit. And now... Is, it, is she in the world now? Like, holy crap, I don't even know what to expect anymore. This episode, I mean, this whole season has been completely, completely n crazy for me. And I have enjoyed that. I have enjoyed that from the beginning to the end. At first it was slow, but you gotta build it up. And now, we're the, here. We're at this point, and I've enjoyed it. Uh, there's been maybe some changes, but I've loved it all. And I, and I recommend anyone that has been an SAO lover to go back and watch this again i may even have to and here's what i was trying to get to you guys to show you that there is some big news for those that are fans of sao it is coming back guys for October 2019. Hope you guys are hyped. I sure am. Be safe, guys. Take care of yourselves. Leave a like, comment down below, subscribe, and I will catch you guys in October. <laughs>